And Holy Father, I will say thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for who you are, Father, be that exalted. Lord, we come in tonight, meeting into your care. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Send us direction today. Open our eyes of understanding. 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 Holy Spirit, have your way. We commit, we dedicate tonight's meeting into your hands. Let your presence be tangible. Let your presence be visible. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, He sent forth His word, and His word delivered them. The word healed them and delivered them from their, from their destruction. Holy Spirit, have your way. 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 Open our eyes to see what the natural eyes cannot see. Open our ears to begin to hear what the natural ears cannot hear. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen in Jesus' name. I want us to quickly pray before we go into the word. I want us to tell the Lord, Lord, visit me tonight. Lord, visit me tonight in a unique way. Lord, visit me tonight. Prayer in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, Lord, visit me tonight in a unique way. Lord, visit me tonight in a unique way. Visit me and my family tonight. Visit me and my family tonight in a unique way. In a unique way. In a unique way. Visit me and my family tonight in a unique way. Visit me and my family tonight in a unique way. Visit me and my family tonight. 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 This is Lord. This is Lord. This is Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to pray for this state of New Jersey and for the country of America that Lord. Visit this nation once again. Lord, visit this nation once again. Visit the state of New Jersey once again. Prayer in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, visit this nation once again. Visit this nation once again. Once again. Once again. Once again. Visit the state of New Jersey once again. Visit this land, O oh God. Visit this land, O oh God. Visit this land, O oh God. Visit this land once again. Visit the state of New Jersey. 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 Visit this state, oh God. Visit the land of the United States again. Visit this nation once 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 again. Visit, Lord. Visit, Lord. Visit, Lord, visit this nation once again, once again, once again, once again, once again. Visit this nation, 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 visit this nation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to pray and tell the Lord that every conspiracy of darkness, Every ag agenda of darkness against this nation be terminated by the blood of Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah 7, 7, it says, God said the Lord, he said it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. I want us to pray and tell the Lord that every conspiracy of darkness program projected against this nation, against the body of Christ, be terminated, scatter in the name of Jesus, 
prayer in the name of Jesus, my Lord and my God, every conspiracy of darkness, every agenda of darkness against the body of Christ, every agenda of darkness against this nation, scatter. The Bible says in Psalm 68 verse 1, so let God arise, let his enemies scatter, let his enemies scatter. Every enemy of God's agenda, every enemy of God, scatter, 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 scatter scatter, scatter in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, arise. Let your enemies scatter. Let your enemies scatter every conspiracy of darkness against this nation, against this state. Scatter now. Scatter now. Scatter now. Scatter now. Scatter now. Scatter. 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 Scatter, 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 scatter. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to pray and tell the Lord that, Lord, let your will be established. The Bible says, let your will be done on earth as it is written in heaven. Lord, let your will be established over the state of New Jersey, over the, the state of the United States, over this nation. Let your will be established. Prayer in the name of Jesus, my Lord and my God. Let your will be established over this nation. Let your will be established over this state. Let your will be established. Let your will, Lord. Let your will, Lord. Let your will, Lord. Let your will be established. 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 Let your will be established over this nation. Over this nation. Over this nation. Over the state of New Jersey. Let your will be established. Let your will be established. Let your plan be established. Let your purpose be established over the state of New Jersey. Let your will be established over the state of New Jersey. Let your will be established over this nation, over this nation, over this nation. Let your will be established. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, I've been seeing news of they talking about another variant coming up again, aside from, you know, COVID-19. I want us to pray that every variant, whatsoever that is not of God, every infection in the atmosphere be terminated. We put an end to every viruses. We put an end to every viruses. Prayer in the name of Jesus, my Lord and my God, we put an end to every viruses in this land, in our nation. We put an end to every viruses, every form of virus, either COVID, either any form of variant. Lord, we put an end to every form of virus. We put an end to every form of virus in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we put an end to every form of virus, to every viruses in the land. We put an end to every form of viruses. We put an end to every virus in the land of God, in this nation. We put an end to every form of viruses in the state of New Jersey, in the state of New Jersey, in the state of New Jersey. We put an end to any virus, to any virus, to any virus to any virus, we put an end to it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we put an end to every spirit of waster, every eaters of blood, every drinkers of blood, every eaters of flesh. We put an end to every wasting spirit, every spirit unleashed to the earth to waste the lives of the people. Be terminated, be terminated. Be terminated, be terminated. Every spirit of death, every spirit of waste, programmed to waste the lives of the people. Be terminated, be arrested, 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 be arrested. 
be arrested. Be arrested. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to pray and tell the Lord that, Lord, let there be revival. Lord, let there be revival in this land. Prayer in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, let there be revival in the land of United States, in this state of New Jersey. Let there be revival. Let there be revival. Let revival break out. Let revival break out in our land. In our land. Let revival break out. 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 In our land, let revival break out. Let there be revival in this nation, in this nation, in this nation, in, <clears throat> in this nation. Let there be revival. Let there be revival. Let there be revival in every state in this nation. Let there be revival. 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 Let there be revival in New Jersey. Let there be revival in California. Let there be revival in New York. Let there be revival in Philly, oh God. Let there be revival in Atlanta. Let there be revival in Chicago. Let there be revival in Texas. Let there be revival. Let there be revival. Let there be revival in every state in this nation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to pray and tell the Lord that Lord unleash the angels of revival into this state, oh God. Unleash let the angels of revival be released into this nation. Let revival begin to happen. Let revival begin to break forth. Prayer in the name of Jesus, my Lord and my God. Father, let there be revival. Let there be revival. Let revival begin to break out. 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 Let revival begin to break out in this nation. In this nation. Let revival begin to break out. In this nation. Let revival begin to break out. Let revival begin to break out. Let revival begin to break out in this nation. Let there be revival. 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 Let the angels of fire, let the angels of revival be unleashed into this nation. Be unleashed, be released, be released, be released into every state. Be released, be released. Angels of fire. Angels of revival, be released now, 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 angels of revival, be released, be released, be released, be released, be released, be released. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to pray for our families that Lord. Let there be revival in my family. Let revival break out in my family. Prayer in the name of Jesus, my Lord and my God. Let revival break out in my home. Let there be revival in my home. Let there be revival in my marriage. Let there be revival, oh God. Let there be revival in my home. In my home. In my home. Let there be revival. Let there be revival in my home, oh God. Let there be revival. Let there be revival. In my home, in my marriage, in the lives of our children, let there be revival. 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 Oh Lord, my God, let revival break out in my marriage in my home, in my life, in the life of my wife, in the life of our children. Let there be revival. Let there be revival. Let there be revival. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to pray, lastly, that Lord, 
restore the spirit of holiness and righteousness back to this nation. Lord, restore the spirit of holiness and righteousness back to this nation. Prayer in the name of Jesus, my Lord and my God. Restore, Lord, the spirit of holiness, the spirit of righteousness back to this nation. Oh, Lord, my God, how excellent is thy name in all the heads. Lord, restore, Lord, restore the spirit of holiness, the spirit of righteousness back to this nation. Restore, Lord, restore, Lord, the spirit of holiness, the spirit of righteousness back to this nation, the spirit of holiness, the spirit of righteousness, back to this nation. Lord, restore, Lord, the spirit of holiness, the spirit of holiness, holiness of the Lord, holiness of the Lord. Lord, restore the spirit of righteousness, the spirit of consecration, the spirit of consecration, the spirit of holiness, the spirit of holiness. The spirit of holiness, the spirit of holiness, the spirit of holiness back to this nation, into our churches, into our churches, into our Christian homes. Lord, restore the spirit of holiness, the spirit of righteousness, the spirit of holiness, the spirit of righteousness, the spirit of holiness, the spirit of righteousness, the spirit of holiness back into this nation. Restore, Lord, restore, Lord, the spirit of holiness, the spirit of holiness. The spirit of holiness, the spirit of righteousness, back to this nation, back to this nation, back to this nation. Restore, Lord. Restore, Lord. Restore, Lord. Restore, Lord. The spirit of holiness, the spirit of righteousness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to pray. This one more prayer for ourselves. Those who just reminded me now. I want you to pray this way. Holiness of God, saturate my life. Holiness of God, invade my life. Holiness of God, invade, invade my soul, O God. Invade my soul, O God. Holiness of God, righteousness of God, invade my soul. Invade my soul. That even when your flesh or your spirit is struggling, there will be just... This aura, very strong aura within you that just have passion for the holiness of God. That, oh Lord, let the holiness of God invade my soul. The righteousness of God saturate my soul. Prayer in the name of Jesus, my Lord and my God. Holiness of God invade my soul. Invade my soul. Holiness of God. Righteousness of God. Invade my soul. Invade the life of faith and Josiah. Invade their lives. Invade their lives. Invade their lives. Holiness of God. Righteousness of God. Invade the life of faith and Josiah. Invade their lives. Invade their lives. Invade their lives. Holiness of God, holiness of God, holiness of God, righteousness of God, invade my life, invade my soul, invade the life of my wife, invade our life, invade our marriage, holiness of God, invade our marriage, holiness of God, invade our marriage, holiness of God, holiness of God, holiness of God, invade our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. Uh, once again, I want to say thank you to everyone for joining us tonight. Um, I believe everyone had a productive day. Um, tonight, we're going to be looking at the topic that says, follow me, follow me, follow me. Let's quickly look at the book of Roots. Book of Ruth, Ruth chapter 1, from verse 1 to 17. Ruth chapter 1, from verse 1 to 17. Ruth 1, 1 to 17, I read. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, 
went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Malon and Chilion, Ephratite of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she was left and her two sons, and they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Opa, and the name of the other, Ruth. And they dwelled there about 10 years, and Malon and Chilion died also, both of them, and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Brethren, I want you to pay attention to this story. It's a very powerful storyline. Naomi left her own country because there was famine. There was starvation. There was lack. There was insufficiency. So she sojourned with her husband so that they can survive, so that there can be sustainability. But you see, where they went, everything died there. What I'm saying right now is completely outside my story. But I'm praying that the Lord will help every one of us here including myself, because no one is exempted. Because, you know, what I saw from this story up onto to this place was it's very important to seek direction in all we do. They were looking for survivor. And where they left or where Naomi went was Moab. There, she lost her husband. There, the same Moab, that was where the two sons died. Brethren, you know, just like the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, um, the book of Job, say there is a way that seems right. But the end, there is a way that seems right. But the end is destruction. Brethren, I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. Please, before you make any major decision, I was watching a Christian movie with my wife last night um, after our Bible study. And the woman kept telling the son, the son was about to get married. You know, he was in relationship with this lady, not knowing that the lady was bewitched with a witchcraft. The lady is actually a witch. You know, there are two young people in their 20s. But the mother just have the mother of the son just have this nudging to keep praying. She just don't feel comfortable with the in-law. And she kept telling the son, please don't go right into this relation. Pray more. Pray more. Pray more. But the boy keeps insisting. Now I have a good job. I'm, I have my own house. You know, I'm blessed. You from, from high school to my university days, you kept telling me to be patient, be patient, be patient, you know. He said, I can't be patient anymore. I'm a man now. I have to make my decision. And he did make his decision. But the mother told him one thing, and that's what I'm about to tell you. The mother said, keep praying because God will always speak to those who listen. God will always. It might take time. But as long as you keep praying, God will always, always, it might just take time, but keep praying. And my advice to anyone here tonight, please, I beg you, pray. Whatever you are doing, even, even when God said, or when God is telling you that this is the right partner, never go to sleep 
never go to sleep because our life or our lives <laughs> has been entangled with so many hurdles, many hurdles. Believe me, you have no ideas the kind of challenges that will hit you at different junctions in life. And one thing I have learned from my mentors is for you to scale through many, many hurdles, you must be very deep in knowledge and be very prayerful. The deeper, the deeper, the depth of your knowledge will determine your level of stamina because knowledge makes you solid in the face of tribulation. Prayer also makes you very solid. But you see, when you pray a lot, but you lack knowledge, you will, be, you will still be insufficient. But when you balance both, just like you eat food, if you see a person who keep eating and they don't drink water, it's very risky. But when you eat both, that is balance. So we're going to continue. But I just wanted to point that out, that this woman called Naomi, she sojourned, she and her husband, they left their country because of lack, because of, you know, there was nothing, you know. So verse, verse five, I believe. Verse five says, and Malon and Chilion died also both, we're reading from the book of Ruth 1, from verse 1, now I'm in verse 5. And Malon and Chilion died also, both of them, and the woman who was left of her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters, in, her daughters-in-law, that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab, how that the Lord had visited his people in the giving them bread. In the same nation she left because of lack of food, because of insufficiency. Now that she has lost everything, now the same country she left now, the Lord has now visited the same country. <laughs> Brethren, another story to learn from this. Never look down on anybody, especially ladies, including guys. Never be, never, never be a kind of person that always like carcass. You know, those are my, you always want to be around people who are, who are always looking to sh People who look, you know, who look rich. People who drive certain cars. Please never be like that. Me as a guy, believe me, even as a guy, I don't like guys who does that. Because I saw them when I was in university in Nigeria. I had a couple of them, like even from high school. They always, they, they won't talk to you outside. When they meet you outside, probably because of what you wear. If, if you guys were probably, you know, everybody were to be together, they will probably talk to you. They won't hold too much conversation. But when they get into their carcass of people who wear Gucci, Louis Vuitton, who wear expensive stuff, they will distance themselves. Please don't be like that. Don't never look down. I've seen a lady who looked down on a young man years ago. Told the young man, because she grew up in a rich home, told the young man, I'm sorry, I can't continue this relationship because you work as a clerk. You know, I'm already in college. I'm about to finish college. I'm not in school yet. You know, and she broke the relationship because she looked down. Fortunately, the same person, God has changed that person's level. Please, let's be very careful. So going back to the topic, Follow me. That's our tonight's topic. Follow me. And verse 7 says, Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her. And they went on 
the way to return unto the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you, as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. Let me read that verse 10 again. Verse 10 says, And they, not one, <laughs> Lord, help me, help me. They, you see, the same way many of us have confessed, Lord, save me, and I will follow you. Both of them made a promise. Verse 10 again, And they said unto her, Surely we, meaning two of them, we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters, why will you go with me? And are there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters, go your way. For I am too old to have an husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have an husband also tonight, and should also bear sons, would you tarry for them till they were grown? Would you stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Opa kissed her, her mother, her mother-in-law. But Ruth, Ruth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, my sister-in-law is gone back unto our people and unto our good, unto, unto our gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. Brethren, it was both of them that made the promise in verse 10. By the time Naomi gave them reasons to turn back, up and make a decision quick. You know, let me read further. Verse 16. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. My people shall be thy people, thy God, my God, where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. Brethren, when I, when Jesus will give me this topic, this story, the ending of this story was the most touching aspect. And the reason Holy Spirit used this story is because our salvation is like the story of Opa and Ruth. Ruth told Naomi you don't have any sons anymore. But where you die, I will die. Where you go, <laughs> brethren, 
while I was reading this, you know, in our church, every time new wedded couples get married, uh, my choir master used to use this verse, verse 17, you know, to sing. When, new, when new, newly, newly married people get married and on Sunday, when they do their Thanksgiving, he sings this song for them from this verse. And he says, Entreat me not to leave you, not to turn away from thee. Where you go, I will go. Where you die, I will die. And your people shall be my people. And your God shall be my God. <laughs> Brethren, <laughs> the day of our marriage, our Thanksgiving, the Sunday, after the wedding, every time they sing that song, that song, it breaks my heart. It, because I don't see that song, even before I was married, every time they sing that song, I've never heard that song like a wedding song. That song always triggered my relationship with God. Would When everything is lost, like Job, would I still say, Lord, where you go, I will go. Where you die, Lord, I will die. Where you want me to go, I will still go. The, mom, the same upper who gave a word that we will go with our mother-in-law. The moment she was being given reasons, the Bible says, up and come back. <laughs> Brethren, life will give you and I many reasons to turn back on God. Life will provide you with many options to turn back on God. I'm telling you the truth. Either you believe it or not. Life will provide you and I many reasons to turn back on God. If you go and read the book of Hebrews 11, <laughs> brethren, <laughs> sometimes, you know, like I always say, and I said it last night as well at the Bible study, every time I read the Bible, you know, I just ask God, God, help me. This thing is deeper than I, than I thought. Help me. Help me. Help me. I'm telling you, it's, it's a journey. It's a life of death. It's a life that you need God's strength and grace to continue to work with this God. I mean, if you want to make a landmark, if you don't want to make a landmark, all you just need to do is, you know, don't live a life of sin. Keep a holy life. You don't have to do much. You know, study the Bible. You know, maintain your good relationship with God. You won't make, you won't make much mark. You will make heaven. But if you want your life to be, you want to live a, a life of significance, you want to be a preserver of God's agenda. Because, you see, those God are looking for are those that will preserve generations after generations. If you look at the stories of almost all the people in the Bible, these guys are preservers. Today, we can talk about the God of Abraham. He preserved what we call faith today. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, their story preserved the integrity of God. Their life was a living sacrifice. People that preserved the integrity, their life become a, a pace that everybody can look up to. Brethren, we used to follow when there's no answers. We used to follow him when he's not saying yes anymore. We used to follow when he is quiet and he's silent. Would you follow him? Ruth told Naomi, wherever you die, I will die with you, Lord. Wherever you go, I will go with you, O oh God. I don't care what is happening around me. I don't care what I have lost. I'm willing to die with you. And he held on to that word. Brethren, 
Let's quickly look at the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. Matthew chapter 4, 19 to 22. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Yeah, from verse 19 to 22. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. Thank you so much, Brother Kenny. You know, while I was preparing for this, <laughs> Lord, help me. He said, and he said unto them, follow me, and I will make thee, make you fishers of men. You see, the end goal of our salvation, yeah. <laughs> The end goal of the salvation we have received is to become fishers. But you cannot become a fisher until you are willing to follow. The end goal, the end goal, the end result of our salvation is to become a fisher, not a fisher of fishing for fish, no. But people that will bring transformation, people that will bring innovation, people that will bring, you know, um, great impact to their generation. But you see, in that salvation, for all of these things to be achieved, each person must be willing to follow. Follow me. And you see, if you look at where our brother just read now, by the time he called the rest of them, verse 21, verse 21, verse, even verse 20 says, and they straight away left their nets. They left what they were using to make source of income. <laughs> and they followed him. Let's read further. And going on from this, he saw other two brethren, James, son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them, and they immediately left the ship. Brethren, why won't the Bible record their name? They left the they even left their father. They left their source, <laughs> brethren, in this journey. In this journey called faith, you and I must be willing to sacrifice precious. Please don't quote me wrong. I'm not telling you to, to leave your job. I'm not telling you to move out of your house. What I'm trying to tell you is in our walk with the Lord, it will demand precious things from you. This walk will demand precious, it will demand precious things. If you look at all these people, it demanded precious things from them. Their nets. They were fishers of men. That, is, that was their source of income. Let's look at another man. Let's look at another man. Let's look at the book of Luke. Luke 18. Anyone can read. Luke 18, 18 to 24. Luke 18. <clears throat> Luke, Luke 18. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, 
do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother. 21. And he, and he said, all these have I kept from my youth up. And now, now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, yet lackest thou one thing, sell all thou that sell all that thou hast and distribute, distribute unto the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God. Thank you. Brethren, did you see that? <laughs> Honestly, thank you so much, Brother Kenny. Thank you so much for helping me tonight. I'm a bit strong. Brethren, can you see that? This, you see, if you look at the first place we read, look at the story of Ruth, um, Opa and Ruth and Naomi. Opa went back to her family they also said that she went back to her gods. The god, they use a small letter G. The god she was serving, she went back. She went back to that god. Ah. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Brethren, remember what Naomi said. Uh, Naomi said, the Lord. If you go back to that chapter, Ruth chapter 1, they use capital letter L. Meaning, Naomi was, she believed in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and, I, and Jacob. So, meaning, Opa, she has left the idols, the God she had before. She left it. She now joined, because when she got married to the son, of Naomi. Now she believed in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But the moment the son died, she went back to her previous God. I don't know why Holy Spirit took me back again. Brethren, we're going to pray tonight. Some people, little challenges, they go back. Little challenges, they go back. These are people who have professed about God. These are people who have, who have boasted, I would do this for God. I would do this for God. But when challenges of life arises, the Bible says, a righteous man falleth seven times, but he shall rise again. You see, one of the things I will tell young people who are not married, life is for tough people. I don't like you. If you are not tough, tough skin, Tough-hearted, rugged. I won't lie to you. You will almost give up. You will almost give up on life because there are many things that even God will not tell you that will be scheduled into your journey. Many things that, I, believe me, no matter the prayer you will pray, God will not reveal it to you because He wants He wants to train you. Please, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. I'm begging you, build capacity. Build capacity. The story of this man, Bro Kenny just read now, the man was very rich. Look at Ruth. Ruth too, she had family, but she was willing to cling to Naomi. She was willing to cling to the God. If you go back to that chapter again, he said, your God, your God I will serve. I'm not going back to where I came from. You see, but you see this rich man, Jesus told him, sell every, the most precious asset, the things that look like asset to you, the things that are of gold in your heart, the things that are more precious to you, you have to let them go. Sell them. Give them to the poor. Then follow me. <laughs> the Bible says, and the man became sorrow. <laughs> the man, I'm trying to imagine, you know, like I always tell you, 
when I studied the Bible, I tried to imagine the man's face like, ah, everything I've labored for for years. This man telling me to sell it. Come and follow you. Follow you to where? Where are, <laughs> where are we going? <laughs> Brethren, <laughs> You see, this journey with Jesus is <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> you, need, you need a lot of grace. I'm telling you, you need, you know, I might be laughing, but what I'm saying is very, I'm, I'm being honest. You need a lot of grace. I'm telling you the truth. Imagine someone, you have not paid your rent. You are still trusting God for rent. And God is telling you, you know, I'm going to build your house very soon. <laughs> In your mind, you just be like, God, at least provide money to pay this rent first. You know, you're talking about buying a house. That's the way God is. I'm telling you the truth. He speak into your future. God was telling, Jesus was telling this man, you want to follow me? Are you willing to let go? You see, what, what I'm trying to show you, when they call the disciples, they let go their source of income. Everybody, everybody that will follow this God, brethren, you must pay a price. I'm telling you. And that is one thing that our generation must understand. You know, I've said something before on this platform. Our forefathers, our fathers of faith in their 70s, 80s, 60s, 50s, I won't lie to you, a lot of them have more stamina than our generation. Our generation can pray in display. You know, because social media is now revealing that a lot of young people are praying. But you see this man, this man, they pray inside room for months, months, months. And you see back then, they used to pray on their knees. On their knee, on their knees. <laughs> These men have stamina. These men went through, they went through hell and they came back. Yet they didn't deny God because they understood what I'm telling you tonight. That in working with this God, there is a price to follow him. If I must follow him, I must be willing to let go of something. And look at, and look at this story we just read now, that brother I just read. This was not an angel. This was not one of the disciples. This was Jesus, God, God himself telling that rich man, you want to follow me? Sell everything you have, then you can come and follow me. Let's look at the story of Abraham. Let's open to the book of Genesis 12, 1 to 11. And probably someone else can open to Genesis 19, 17 to 26. Genesis 12, 1 to 11. Genesis 12, 1 to 11. Genesis 19, 17 to 26. Genesis 12, 1 to 11, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, in oh, King James Version. Oh, so there you go. All right. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will shew thee. And I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. For so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went to went with him. And Abram was seventy and five, five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go unto the land of Canaan, and in and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Sichem, unto the plain of Moreh. And the Canaanite was then in the land. Seven. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. 
And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west, and Hai, Hai, Hai on the east. And there he builded an altar unto the Lord, and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed, going unto still toward the south. 10. And there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there. For the famine was grievous in the land. 11. And it came to pass, when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarai his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Brethren, can you see how famine? You know, this is another story. You know, this same story happened to Isaac too. Famine took him. Isaac was going to go to Egypt too. Brethren, we need to pray. We need to pray that may God not allow us to go through lack that will take us to the place where we are not supposed to go. I've seen ladies when I was back in Nigeria that because of lack of money to take care of their loved ones, they went into prostitution. They began to sleep with men for money so that they can use that money to take care of their parents and to pay for their younger ones' school fees. These things are real. Insufficiency, lack, will make people do the unusual. But going back to this story, we see how God called Abraham out of his father's house. He said, go to a place, get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, from thy father. Look at how they were mentioned. <laughs> Brethren, let me start from the beginning. Now the Lord said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country, one, and from thy kindred, two, and from thy father's house, three, Unto a land I will show thee. A land, you, where is the land? No name. So God became the GPS. You know how you are driving sometimes and the GPS is just quiet. It's, and sometimes you feel like you are lost and you just keep driving. That was my imagination here. Just follow me. Just follow me. You see, brethren, the objective of tonight's teaching is until we keep praying that, Lord, give me the grace to continue to follow. There were many that followed in the past that turned back. There were many, if, even, even you yourself, if you think deeply, there will be some people you knew before in this nation that used to be on fire for God, and now they have turned back. They stopped following because something died within them. Something was disconnected within them. Abraham left the seen for the unseen. He left the visible for what, for, for what was not visible. He left the tangible for the intangibility. He left everything that he has been acquainted to and acquainted with left everything for this God. The God you cannot see. <laughs> Brethren, I'm trying to show you that men, men pay the price. We just saw in New Testament, men pay the price to follow this God. And because he followed, if you read verse 5, verse 5 says, and Abraham took his Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance, and they had gathered and the souls that they had, they had gotten in Aaron, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And in the land of Canaan, they came. He kept going. He kept going. He kept going. Brethren, verse 7, and verse 7 says, And the Lord appeared. And the Holy Spirit told me, he said, do you know why the Lord appeared? Because he kept following. Hmm. Because, you see, the more you obey, the more you respond. The more you keep following. 
It might take time. Remember, I said something at the beginning. He said, God will definitely speak. But can you can you be consistent to stay? Bible says in the book of Habakkuk chapter 2, it said, and I will go and I will see and hear what he will say unto me. Brethren, the grace to continue to follow. <laughs> Even me, me that I'm talking to you, there are days I have fought some battles before as a Christian in this country that I almost would ah, God, what? That my spirit almost broke down. And God used my wife to encourage me multiple times, multiple times. And she would just remind me of something. And I would just look at it like God. And, you know, I want the Holy Spirit used for me a lot. When I feel down, I go into a lot of long worship. I'll just go for my favorite worship songs. Then I begin to look for the right preaching to listen to. Brethren, I'm not here to put fear in you. This life, you have to be rugged. Be rooted in God's word. Be rooted. Be willing to know. Be humble. But you must be rooted. Be root. And you must acknowledge that you are not a super person. There are some people, they will never acknowledge that, you know, life, is, life can be very challenging. Please, when you get to that point, acknowledge the person of the Holy Spirit. Lord, help me. Help me. And let me be honest with you. We should actually acknowledge it every day. Lord, help me. Seek daily help. Lord, help me. What will happen tomorrow now? None of us know. None of us know. Remember what Jesus Christ told the disciples? He said, pray that ye fall not into temptation. The same prescription he was prescribing to for them, that same medication, was the same medication him too was swallowing. Jesus Christ was praying. He came. He went back. He prayed. He came. He went back. He prayed. He came. They were sleeping. Ah. He said, guys, pray. Pray. There's a temptation waiting for me. That's why I'm praying. There are temptations waiting for you too. Pray that you don't fall into temptation. When Jesus Christ went, he was taken into heaven. When, the, when their own temptation came, what happened? They prayed. They had to pray. They prayed to the point the place shook. Brethren, build capacity. The next reading, Genesis 19, 17 to 26. Genesis 19... All right. I read. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for my life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lord said unto them, Oh, not so, my Lord. Behold now, my servant has found grace in thy sight. Thou hast magnified the mercy, thy mercy, which, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. Behold, now, the city is near to flee unto, and is a little one. Oh, let me escape, Peter. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And, and he said unto him, verse 21, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for be which thou hast spoken. Verse 22. Haste thee, escape theater, for I cannot do anything till thou become theater. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zohar. 
the sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zohar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and, Gom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Brethren, one of the major reasons why I added this story of Lot to our reading tonight, imagine Jesus died on the cross. Imagine the years it took before Jesus came. Imagine some things that we have been through. Now we are saved. Now, you see, like they only say, you don't know the true identity of a person when they are poor or when they are living an average life or when they have not gotten their, what they are looking for. When the blessing comes, that is when you know true people. I'm telling you, when the blessing comes, that and that is why you must never, never be, don't be too overconfident in yourself. No, no. It takes the grace of God. It takes the grace of God, believe me. It takes the enablement of God. Because there are some blessings that can come. If you are not rooted, you will just see yourself making some unexpected decision. You just see your behavior. The same you that used to be humble. Now, when the blessing comes, you know, you see a janitor, you see a cleaner, you see a waitress, the way you talk, the way you, you not see yourself that you are super, you are up there. You don't see yourself like, oh, we are all humans anymore. You view yourself the way you are being viewed on your job, that I'm a boss at work. How would this person be talking to me like this? <laughs> Brethren, it takes the grace. God used Abraham to negotiate for Lot and his family. The angel came to rescue them. Guess what happened? After the whole rescue mission was done, they were given instruction never to look back just keep following. Just keep following. Just keep following. Not to wife went back. Lot wife went back. The question is, what was she looking for? Hmm. Some people, let me be honest with you. There are many people who come to church. But there are many people who love the world more than God. Let's be very honest. Thank God that God cannot expose the heart of many people. There are many people, believe me, they are saying amen today. They are saying yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. But you see, when the blessing comes, when they can go to Bahamas, when they can go on vacation, then you will know if you can still say yes, Lord, when all the blessing is there. Will you still will you will, will you still be able to wash the bathroom when you become a CEO and nobody to wash the bathroom in church? Will you still be able to wash the bathroom? Will you still be able to pick up things and do the dirty job in the house of God, even when you become a director? <laughs> Brethren, please. And that is why we must pay attention to this heart. This heart. Because the question I'm asking myself is, you lived in the, in the land where there was homosexuality, yet this lady was looking back to go and take what? They knocked on your door to want to rape your children, yet you look looking back to go and look for what? When I look at someone like me, God rescued me from a wayward life. So the question is, what is in that life again to enjoy? 
the day God opened my eyes, December 28th, that was the day I realized that alcohol is poison. When I used to drink, I would get to the house, the person would sell the drink, 5.30 a.m., 5.30 a.m. My own was, it was like a curse. I'm telling you, the addiction was so strong that even the guy, my roommate, that we drink together, had to call me one day. Say, said, will slow down, slow down. This thing is too much, slow down. The addiction was too strong. When I go to the toilet, I have to smoke. When I come out of the toilet, I have to smoke. When I'm eating, after eating, I have to smoke. When I'm drinking, I must smoke. Every day, 20 pack of cigarettes. White London, Aspen, Benson and Edges, Rotemans. Smoke anything. Smoke anything. Drink anything. Brethren, and God now gave me another chance. When God appeared to me in 2009, that was one of the things he told me in that vision. He said, I'm giving you another chance. Go and preach the gospel. I'm coming back again. Brethren, and that is why we who are believers, please, be careful of your association if you don't want the enemy to take you back like Lot's wife. While I was preparing for this, the Holy Spirit showed me the story of Demas. Demas deserted Paul in the book of 2 Timothy 4, chapter 10. Demas was also part of the disciples. But the Bible says, the things of the world was so much in the heart of Demas. Brethren, please, I beg you, I beg you, why you pray for God to change your story? Why you pray for God to change your level? Why you pray for God take me to a great height? Please pray for this heart. You see, one thing I like that I like about your heart is the Lord always reveal those things. He will be showing you anger is there, jealousy is there. Envy is there. Lost is there. Please don't ignore those who whisper. Don't ignore. Because you see, in the day of the blessing, when this, this demon, when they rise, ah, brethren, please, I'm begging you, fight, contend, contend with this. You see, if the same Peter can be used by the Holy Ghost in Luke chapter 10, in Luke chapter, go and read Luke chapter 10. The same Peter, Jesus was saying, get ye behind me. The devil possessed, it's the same man, let me be honest with you, if we don't carry discernment, the same man God possess, the devil can possess who? The devil can corrupt anybody if you don't have discernment. If you don't have, and, and that is why it takes grace to continue to stay, to stay in this presence. Because if you don't stay, you'll be so surprised how the devil... And look at what the devil did. Oh, Jesus, help me. Who will ever believe that what Peter said? That was compassion. Sincere compassion. But that compassion in the spirit, that compassion was against the agenda of God's... Oh my God. You see, when I always... Please, when I tell you, this Bible is deep, very deep, very, very deep. Because Peter had, he had no idea the plan of God. So his, his own was, you shall not die. You shall not die again. You have become the enemy of progress. That was why Jesus Christ called him the devil. Because my agenda is to go and die on the cross. Brethren, we need discernment, though. We need discernment. We need discernment. I'm telling you. We need that. Look at the Bible says. He said there is a way that, that seems right. About two years ago, I was in a place of study in church on a Saturday. And Holy Spirit elaborate on that verse for me. In the book of Job. He said that way that seems right. It can look right for years. Everybody will be applauding you. You are doing very well. It can look so good for years. 
until the end, you now realize, oh my God, this, is, this has been the path of destruction for this year, and I didn't know. Brethren, please, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. We need to continue to pray. We need to continue to intercede for our family and friends. Be careful who you call best friend. Be careful where you associate. Be careful where you are. If you are in a relationship, please pray. Pray. Don't allow the enemy lead you to sin. Pray. Pray. I'm telling you. There are times whereby yeah, you even get offended in each other. In order to preserve your relationship with God, to preserve your sanity, to preserve your virginity, sometimes you have to make some... some <laughs> You have to draw some line. I'm telling you the truth. Sometimes you have to. Sometimes you have to. Sometimes you have to. Please, I'm begging you. This journey, this journey is a journey of grace. A lot of grace. That Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Give me your strength, oh God. Take away my, take away my weakness and give me your strength. The strength to follow. And lastly, let's look at the book of John 21, 15 to 22. John 21, 15 to 22. John 21, then as we pray, I want someone to open to Romans 8, 35 to 37. John 21, 15 to 22. John 21, 15, 22, correct? Yes, sir. And I read, So when they had dined, Jesus said, un said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest me, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith, un saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. 17. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved, because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. 18. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hand, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. 19. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. 20. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciples whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned unto his breast, breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? 22. Jesus said unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Thank you. Please, sir. Jesus was asking, was asking Peter, lovest thou me? The same question God is still asking every one of us today. And those questions comes in different situations. Even though I have not answered your prayer, do you still love me, Taiwo? Even though I've not given you those things you desire, do you, am I still God in your life? Even though you are going through pain, am I still your God? And you see, when, when Jesus has said everything, he said, despite everything I've said, follow me. <laughs> follow, you must continue to follow me. Follow me. Follow and you see, the last verse Abra just read, they were asking, oh, 
who will betray, who will be here. And Jesus ended that verse. He said, follow thou me. Just, you see, as long as you can follow, you will become. He said, follow me and I will make. Only those who follow, only those who can follow can be make. Brethren, please, I'm begging you. We're going to pray two prayers. But I want us to read our last Bible reading that I just gave. Romans 8. Romans chapter 8, 35 to 37. Then we're going to pray. Then our brother is going to come up 10, 30. Romans 8. Romans 8, 25 to 27, right? Um, 35, 35 to 37. Oh, okay. It says, can anything separate us from Christ's love? Doesn't mean he has no love. He has no longer love for us if we have trouble or calamity. Or are we persecuted or hungry and destitute or in danger or threatened by death with death? As the scripture says, for your sake, we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No death spites all these things. Overwhelming victory is ours. True Christ who loved us. Brethren, all of these things, they will surely happen. Verse 35 says, Woo. Some translation says, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep. Ah! You know what that means? These guys, they're always dodging for their life. Every city they enter, they are almost being killed anywhere. But yet, they are still saying, what shall separate us from this love of Christ? <laughs> Let me ask you a question. For some of you who are not married yet, and for some of you who are married who have kids, and they ask you today, choose marriage or choose your children. Deny your children or deny Christ. Which one do you choose? Think about it. There were many martyrs. There was a latest video I saw on Instagram recently, I think like two months ago, from one of the Muslim nation. The woman said, if Jesus Christ can shed his blood. He said, when they were going to kill her husband, she told her husband, don't cry. Why are you crying? Don't cry. It's an honor to be a wife of a Mataya. Ah! <laughs> Brethren, people have paid the price for this salvation. There was one of the first books I read when I gave my life to Christ in this country. There was a missionary that went to India this guy wanted to preach. He was so he was so eager to preach to the people of India. You know what this guy did? He didn't have money. This guy went to the hospital and donated about 10 pounds of blood. He donated his blood, about 10 pounds. He sold it to get money, to go and buy a projector so that he can preach the gospel. Brethren, and that's what they are telling us here. What shall who? What? He said, not even death. Brethren, in this journey, calculate it, death too. You see all the things they mentioned from verse 35? He said, distress, persecution, tribulation, nakedness, peril, sword, many things involved in working with the Lord. It takes the grace of God. Look at verse 36. He said, as it is written, 
for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors. Through him that loved us. Verse 38, he says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature that be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Ah, what kind of conviction is that? What a conviction. What a love. <laughs> Brethren, these are eye openers. This, this little verse we just read, Romans 8, 35 to 38, to 39 is a reflection of how rooted, how deep, deep, deep. These guys are like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Telling us that not even angels can separate them from the love of Christ. <laughs> Brethren, I want us to pray. Just one prayer. That's it. Just one. Then our prayer is going to kick in. Lord, you see, let me be honest with you, like I said, when it's easy to confess when everything is good. It's easy to confess Jesus is good, Jesus is good when everything is going your way. When the storm arises, will you still say Jesus is good? I've been through some of, <laughs> believe me, I've had my own shares. I'm telling you. And there are many waiting for many of us in the future because the storm never stops. It never stops. It never. It never stops. Brethren, get rooted. I'm begging you. Don't allow things to catch you on our Don't let them catch you unprepared. I want us to pray. Because you see, when some things catch you unprepared, it's not everybody that recover. Not everybody recovers from tribulation. Not everybody. We just read the story of Demas. Demas deserted Paul. Deserted Timothy, rather. Left. Brethren, I want us to pray and tell the Lord. Lord, give me the grace to follow. Regardless of anything that might be surrounding me. Lord, give me the grace to continue to follow. Prayer in the name of Jesus, my Lord and my God. Lord, give me the grace to continue to follow, regardless of what I might be going through, regardless of what I might go through in the future. Lord, grant me the grace to continue to follow, to continue to follow, to continue to follow, to continue to follow. To continue to follow. Lord, grant me the grace Grant me the grace. Lord, grant me the grace. The grace to continue to follow. 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 Oh, Lord, my God. The grace to continue to follow. The grace to continue to follow. The grace to continue to follow. In Jesus' name we pray. Brethren. One of the things the Holy Spirit really emphasized in my heart recently, and it applies to me too, not just you guys. Please build your faith. Holy Spirit kept emphasizing that to me a lot. He said, Tell my people, build your faith. Build your faith. Increase your faith. Work on your faith. Study a lot. Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by God's word. Please build your faith so that you can have the stamina to make, so it takes faith to make dangerous decisions. It takes faith. It takes faith to confront the Goliath. It takes faith to take your promised land. It takes faith. It takes faith. Build your faith. Build your faith. Build your faith. There are promises that have been given to many of us. It takes faith to, to enter those promises. 
It takes faith to activate those promises. So if the faith doesn't increase, the promise is just keep, is just hanging. We keep hanging. I pray the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Brethren, please I encourage you. Open the word of God. Spend time in God's word. Spend time in God's word. Pray. Find time to pray. Ask God to increase you, to increase your strength. Seek God's direction. Don't stop praying until you get answer. Keep asking him, Lord, help me. Help me to live a holy life. Help me to live a righteous life. Help me. And the Lord will strengthen every one of us in Jesus' name. Broken, over to you. Amen. Amen. Um, thank you, Brother Tao. Hold on, let me just get my camera up. Uh, thank you, Brother Tao. Um, honestly, we just thank God for a powerful message. Um, and um, let's 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 just begin. Let's just pray real quick. Um, our Heavenly Father, we just come before you. We give you praise. We worship you. Oh God Almighty, because this time, oh God, that this moment that we are all here is because you have willed it, Father. It's not because we have chosen. Oh God, but you have set in time for us to be present, oh God. And we pray, oh God, that the word that we heard and what we will hear, Father, oh God, let it sit, oh God, and let it. And we pray that you, oh God, will minister to us in the name of Jesus in a new way. We give you all glory, honor, and adoration. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Um, honestly, uh, thank you, Brother Tao, for this opportunity. I do not take it lightly. Um, so we're just going to go right into it. Um, the purpose of this is honestly not to spend a lot of time speaking. All right. It's not about hearing my voice. All right. It's really to, it's really to impact the lives of all of us here that are watching, listening. Um, uh, last time you guys heard me speak was about, I believe two weeks ago. Um, I spoke briefly on what the Lord laid on my heart to speak. Um, and I'm just going to continue from there. Um, cause God just literally just told me, listen, there, there's more down the feet. Um, and I just want to do right by honesty, following him as much as possible. Um, the main focus of this message is preparation, preparation, however you want to say. Um, I may sway left or right, I may go like, may teeter kind of back and forth on the topic, but I pray that the Holy Spirit will overshadow us and help us to really put it all together and understand. Um, so the Spirit of the Lord spoke saying, prepare yourself for my presence. Um, now, Know that with preparation, with preparation, there is an expectation of you. There's an expectation of attached to it, whether it's of you or anything. There is something that is expected with comes with preparation, right? And it seems like common knowledge, honestly, but honestly, it's it's really not, right? And um, and the hard truth is that for us believers, it's really easy for us to forget that when it comes when it comes to our walk in Christ, right? That with with everything that we're prepared for, with things happening, there's something that God's expecting of us. There's an expectation of something to come, right? There's something coming. And, and for some reason, we tend to forget that. So we're just going to go right into um, Romans 8, Romans chapter 8, verse 22 to 25. Romans chapter 8, verse 22 and 25. I have both versions. I have King James version up and... Berean standard, um, standard Bible translation. I may be going back and forth, so just follow me as I go. Verse twenty-two. It reads, "We know that the whole we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until the present time. Not only that, but we ourselves have the first fruit of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons." the redemption of our bodies for in this we hope we we hope for in this hope i'm sorry for in this hope we were saved the hope that is seen is no hope at all who hopes for what he can already see but if we hope for what we do not see we wait patiently for it all right and that that verse just ties into basically what i said with expectation i mean verse 24 let me be specific verse 24 basically speaks of what i said there is hope, right? For in this we were saved, but that hope that is, but for that that is seen, there is no hope at all, right? When something is happening, when they, when they, when for you to prepare for something that you don't see, there, there should be an expectation, some type of form of hope there, right? Now let's look at, let's look at the life of David for me to tie a little more. Sorry, I'm stumbling on my words a little bit. 
let's look at the life of David. As a boy, he worked in the fields. He tended to the sheep. Um, we read that he fought lions and bears. Him not knowing that God was honestly preparing him for what was to come. At that age, I can't imagine that he was going to be fighting against a, 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 a giant. <laughs> I, I, I doubt that crossed his mind at that time, right? To his little knowledge, God was preparing him because there was an expectation that God had of him. God had an expectation of David, hence the preparation, whether he knew it or not, right? So with that, I want us, at this point, I want us to honestly throw away that cycle of automatically questioning God by saying, God, 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 what do you want from me? Why am I going through this? When situations arise, you just automatically panic. Listen, now I'm not saying that, um, it's wrong to um, ask God questions. Listen, um, um, always seek for clarity and understanding in your season, right? And that 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 is that goes without saying, right? Always ask for clarity and understanding. You want to know exactly how you're walking. However, rather, I'm talking specifically about moments that arise unexpectedly, right? You know, you plan out your day, you plan out how things will go, your finances, or I don't know, literally your day, your driving accident. And the first thing, it's, it's almost human nature. It's, it's almost human nature. The first thing we do is, 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 is we worry, we complain. I'll say complain instead of worry because complaint comes with so many different emotions, right? So we, com we, com we complain automatically, right? And then it's after that complaint that we settle down. You know, we, we talk to ourselves, especially us believers, let's be real. Um, things happen, we rise up. And then after that, it's like, God, God, give me patience. And I, listen, I'll speak for myself moments that happen and 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 you know my my temper temper rises a bit um and i'm like like come on why is this not happening and then after that then i sit and i wait and i'm like okay god you know what let me let me let me and let me look to you let me let me stop let me stop worrying and just let you take control but but what we need to do we need to flip that all right we need to flip that order we need to get out of that cycle all right, because once you once your initial reaction is to understand that is, that there's something attached, right? Once your initial reaction is to understand that there's something attached to your season, to that to that situation, to your season, I'm telling you, worry and doubt will not come. And you, uh, yeah, yeah, I said flip that order, right? Um, understand first, and then, but no, once you understand, worry is gone, right? There's no reason to worry because that understanding is there. That knowledge of listen. Uh, uh, God has something for me through this, whether it's directly or indirectly. Right? We can't. We we cannot be closed minded. Um, I'm just gonna go to um verse 23 real quick. All right. Um, I'm gonna read back on 23. Um, it says, "Not only that, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoptions as sons, the redemption of our bodies." I'm going to read it in King James Version um, there with me if I just pull it up. Uh, I, I have it up. Okay. Um, 23, and it reads, and not, on, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. Um, and that 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 verse really spoke out to me at that point, right? Other than the whole of creation waiting, expecting something from us. Um, not only that, but our spirit man is calls out. Our spirit man groans innerly. They that have the fruits of the spirit. It was it's so specific. <laughs> but we ourselves, I'm gonna read it again. We ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit, specifically, our spirit man calls out, right? Um, I, I want you to, I want you to think of it like this. I'm just going to, I want you to think of this just like how our, our mortal bodies, this flesh that was created from the dust of the earth, Genesis 2, 7. Um, after a certain amount of hours in the day, like regularly, right? You go to work, you come back home, do some things. After a certain amount of hours, your body needs some rest. <laughs> your body needs to sleep, right? You get tired, you get sluggish, right? That's, that's your mortal man. That's your, your flesh beckoning to you to to go back into the initial state of creation where your body did nothing but rely on the breath of god right if we read genesis 2 7 um real quick i'm just going to read it then the lord 
I'm reading um, Berean Standard Version, um, Berean Standard Bible. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed life into, and, and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils. And the man became a living being. It wasn't until the breath of life came that he became a living being. So every night our bodies want to, need to go back into that where 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 before before creation it took it needs only only the breath of life breath of god the same way the same way our mortal man is beckoning for that is the same way that our spirit man calls out for what connects it to the spirit what connects it to god All right, the exact same way the spirit of the lord spoke saying prepare yourself for my presence, right? And I touched briefly on the difference of the um, the differences from the from the presence of the Lord, um, filling the atmosphere in your service, right? To when um, to 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 one that's more personal, right? This revelation was more of a personal, um, presence, right? Now the Bible says, in the presence of the Lord there is liberty, right? So we know that when the presence of the Lord fills a room, a gathering of us, everyone that is in that room benefits everyone whether it's a touch whether it's a graze of his glory everyone benefits but let me tell you something when when the lord decides to come directly to you right when he when he says i'm going to use me as an example when he says uh, my my son kenny standing right there in the midst of everybody praying I, I i see another person next to him but kenny here yeah, i'm going to him I have something for him. Yes, everybody will benefit, but listen, my story will be different. <laughs> Ooh, listen, uh, I'm, uh, I'll get into that. I'll get into that later because that that gets me excited when I think about that. When I think about that. <laughs> I digress. I digress. Um, listen, the presence of the Lord comes with uh with 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 many things. Um, presence of the Lord comes with elevation. All right, enlightenment, power, glory of God. But we must not forget something, right? Oh, I, I could not forget something. And that's that's tests and warfare. And follow me when I say this, all right? Um, um, I'm going to focus on warfare tonight because I find some tests, I'm going to focus on tests and warfare specifically because I find something very unique about the two, right? And there's And there's similarities is that most often times when it comes to tests and warfare, they come both before the presence of the Lord, before the Lord visits you, and even after, right? And I'll get I'll get into explain. I'm not trying to say that that God comes with dilemma and problem to get me right. Please get me right. All right, but 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 think of the word tests and warfare. Now, please, please do not be 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 closed minded when I say warfare, right? Um a lot of people, when they think of of test and warfare, we only think of like struggle, blood, sweat, tears, um, um, and then intense prayer that comes with all that, right? Please, please don't be open mind. Please, please understand that 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 what you are required of will speak of what your tests will be. Please understand that, right? Remember, we're still talking about preparation, all right? This part of the message came to me as a series, um, so I have like many topics and many subtopics under this um under this focus of preparation but i'm gonna stick just like i said to tests and warfares now listen tests and warfares come in many forms spaces and phases i'm gonna say that one more time so so my words don't get slurred tests and warfares come in many forms faces and phases and i'm gonna touch briefly on all and on three of them if the lord drops something into your heart about it a little more listen go ahead put it into the chat <laughs> listen let let us all benefit yes i'm the one speaking but it's 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 god that's a minister so god needs me to be quiet he says something to you please put it in the chat let us all benefit i'll continue um tests and warfare comes in many forms faces and faces i'm gonna speak on the forms Many forms. How, how would you how would you picture that? Many forms. Um, one moment it's 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 one thing. Let's see. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hold this up real quick. One moment. I don't know if it blurs the screen. One moment. It's a bottle of water, just for reference, right? One moment. It's the form of a bottle of water. The next moment. It's the uh, it's the form of a mouse, right? 
um, um, many different forms. It can change, right? Um, but the thing about form is that we can tell it's the difference of the form, of the shape of, of, of what it is physically, because we can see we discern the form is different than what the uh, what the it what the latter is. Listen, even by um just if, if I saw from afar, right? I'm talking physically now, right? Obviously, let's let's tie this spiritually. If I saw from afar, this is these two are clearly different, different forms, right? Different, different forms of of tests and, and different forms of, of warfare. Um, now, um, and and we can easily discern these, right? So we know exactly how to how to how to how to walk, how to how to maneuver through each one, how to prepare ourselves through each one, right? With each with with a different form, you know. Okay, this this is not what was yesterday, so my preparation is going to be completely different. That's something that comes automatically when you see when you when you can notice that many faces, right? Faces. Now, this is a this is a um this is an area that a lot of us struggle. Um, now I wouldn't say a lot of us. I won't speak that, but a lot of people. Let me say that um, a lot of people tend to struggle. Let me not speak that over anybody. Um. Now back the form, right? Just what we spoke of the form of that test or warfare, like the same thing. It may seem, it may look very similar. I'm gonna. I wish I had another water bottle, right? All right, another water bottle, and I had, let's say, a Poland Spring. The form looks very simple, but the face. I'm gonna use this tag. The face is different. Poland Spring is not the same thing, All right? So from afar, hey, two bottles of water, the same thing. But listen, <laughs> come closer. Wait, hold up, it's something different. All right, I'm gonna use an example. Now, I'm I'm gonna use myself as an example. When I was a kid, I forget. I think I was in middle school or high school. I was walking home from school with my brother um and we were walking up a street going towards 7-eleven and from afar I thought I saw my older sister mind you my older sister was was in school was off season school and for some reason I looked and this person was literally like the form of my sister and I'm like oh my god she's here I was excited I haven't seen her in years I'm telling you I tapped my brother I was like Tai, it's Sistami. We were like, what, what, what we saw? We we're like, oh shoot. I'm telling you, we were screaming, waving. Sistami. But we got closer. <laughs> oh man, Holy Spirit. We got closer and realizing the face is completely different. That, that, oh my God, that excitement, that, that, oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. I know what this is. I know who this is. I know all that came to a halt. I mean, there was no, there was no, there was no trace of that emotion anymore. Listen, don't get caught unaware because you thought or you think you know what season you're in because the form is similar. Don't be caught with, 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 with unaware. I, oh man, I, I don't, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I, God, I'm not losing it. I'm not losing it, but I'm getting a little too excited. Let me, oh, do not, <laughs> do not get caught. Because when I think of that, when I think of that moment, I'm like, Jesus, Holy Spirit, so many, so many people do go through that. A season comes and God, oh, I went through this before. I know, I know what to do. I know what to do. I, I'm going to do this. And then it's like a smack in the face. God, what's happening? What's happening? Because you just, you're, you're doing it complete. You thought you were prepared, but you weren't. Now, a lot of us deal with these types because we want to deal with the same type of um, I want to, we think it's the same type of warfare, but it's a completely different battle. All right, I'm going to go into the third and last one, which I'm, well, not last one, because there's probably more, and if Holy Spirit leads something in your heart, please put it in the chat. Um, but the last one I'm going to speak about, like I said, is phases, right? Different from faces, phases, right? And the best way for me to explain is because, listen, I used to play a lot of video games, so I know it, sometimes I do. But if you ever played, like, Call of Duty, any shooter game or any game at all that has levels or requires a certain skill of yours, right? There's always like this survival mode, this long lasting something, right? Right, and and in this survival mode, um, there are many waves, waves, phases of enemies of adversaries, right? Now, the beginning, the 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 first, I'm gonna say the first five, one to five, those phases. Fairly, fairly easy, fairly simple, right? Now, now, when I say phases, think about um the forms, phases, just like I was saying, right? But, 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 but the special thing about phases is that phases is normally all in this is in the same test, same test, different difficulties, 
different moments, different subtopics, right? Going back, the first five levels are normally pretty simple, right? You start getting the hang of it. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm getting through it. And then the next phase comes in a different face, all right? Please remind you, different face, same form, right? We're still thinking that we're, it still looks like the same test, but a different face. Level six is completely different. The minute it starts, everything jumps at you. And next, you know, instead of you, I'm going to use my example. Instead of me being ready, I'm about to just um, win the level. Oh, I'm backtracking. I'm retreating. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of a strategy now, but it's a little too late. <laughs> it's a little too late. I didn't prepare myself for, for what to come. This comes with discernment. Preparation, right? This comes with discernment. To know that this phase, this form, this face is not the same as the last. Holy Spirit, <laughs> um, um, faces and phases do seem very similar, all right? Um, please understand, but it, they are very different. Very different. Very different. You can put them, we can, let's, 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 we can categorize, just like I said, we can categorize to them together, right? But they are very different. The Holy Spirit will give you, will give you discernment. But at the end of the day, honestly, you need to prepare. Preparation, it, it, it's, it's, it's so important. Now, how do we prepare, right? I'll speak on, on, on the one method that honestly that I know best, right? And, and, and I know best. And what we're going to do, we're going to look at Psalms 90, Psalm, the Psalm chapter 91, verse one. I mean, we almost know it. We, or well, not almost, we all should know it. Um, he who dwells, I'm going to speak in the, BSB, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. This at verse is beautiful, right? Because it gives us a, 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 a certainty. All right, will abide, not may, not, not, not um, possibly could find himself abiding in the shadow. No, 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 will abide. He who dwells in the shadow of the Almighty. But let me get into the point that I'm going to make. Um, when we look at the words specifically abide, right? Now I'm speaking on how do we prepare? And when we speak specifically on the word abide, what is the meaning of abide? Just, let's just, let's just, um, what does it mean to abide? It means to accept or to act in accordance with, right? Now there are many words that, um, that are similar, right? Like what's, what's the word sim simile, assembly? There we go, simile, um, that gives similar meanings, right? Um, I'm going to, I'm going to say some is obey, observe to follow um so on and so forth but there was really one honestly i'm not gonna lie that 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 that, that shakes me up every time i honestly i just read the word and it, and that word is well statement is to conform to um holy spirit uh, it, it's to conform to do, do you know do what do you know what conform means it's to to your there's this song that speaks of conforming um um and it, it it shapes you right it changes you right um um i i don't i i want to make sure i want to make sure i end on time i really don't want to take your time i apologize um but continue to and that's to conform to right the bible says that we all reflect um that we all reflect the glory of the lord and being transformed into the same image let's read the actual uh, verse second corinthians uh chapter 3 verse 18 um, i'm gonna read fast and we know who with unveiled faces all reflect the glory of lord and being transformed into his image with intensifying glory which comes from the lord who is the spirit right how do we prepare we abide in the shadow of the almighty we we conform to god we conform we, we we are shaped we are transformed into the same image under the shadow of his of, of the almighty um um and 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 before i go i'm gonna leave you with this honestly i'm gonna leave you with this um um i, I, I was honestly supposed to speak on this last on this topic last week but the lord interrupted and he had he had something much better last week, right? And little did I know that he was preparing me, right? See, see how this works? He was preparing me for something that I needed before I spoke on this, right? On Sunday, my older brother preached and he didn't know about none of this, but he spoke on the variations of the presence of the Lord. Remember the spirit of the Lord said, prepare for my presence, right? Not just the preparation, but also the presence. So I'm going to read off something that I learned 
the 10 variations of God's presence. And if you want to write it down, that's fine. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kind of breeze through it and let the Holy Spirit minister to you. For one of the first, the first is omnipresence. His presence is everywhere at all times. Number two, his manifest presence. He reveals himself in a visible way, exponential way. Number three, the indwelling presence of God, him living in us. Number four, the corporate presence when believers, just like right now, when we gather together. Number five, experiential, ex, experiential presence, right? A presence of the Lord that leaves a lasting impression, right? One that cannot be duplicated, one that, that cannot be impersonated. Number six, eminent presence involved in our daily lives. Number seven, transcendent presence beyond our, our understanding, one we can't understand. Number eight, Shekinah glory, physical manifestation of his glory. Number nine, number, uh, number nine sacramental presence, when we take, for, for once, when we take the communion of God, when we take his holy communion. Number 10, lastly, an intimate presence of God, deep personal relationship with God. These variations highlight the multifaceted ways God reveals himself to us, but we need to prepare because you don't know which one will come. And may the Lord bless the reading of his word. Um, I pray that the spirit of the Lord will minister to you and may God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Kenny. Thank you so much. Thank you for your preparation as well. Um, guys, I pray the Lord will continue to use every one of us. You know, just like um, Bro Kenny said, preparation. Please, whatever future you desire, spiritually, career, most especially anyone who wants to go into marriage, please prepare. You want to go into business, don't just start business. Go and do research. Prepare. If possible, you want to start a business, look for someone or go on Google, go on YouTube. Look at those who did the business before. Check what are the downside of that business. You know, do your research, prepare. Preparation is very important. You want God to visit you. You want, you know, another level of, level of prayer, another level of, you want God to do something, you know, tangible in your life, prepare, take action. You know, anybody who is waiting without preparation can be wasted away. To wait without preparation can lead to waste. Please, the Lord will help every one of us in Jesus' name. Thank you, bro, Kenny. I sincerely apologize taking extra three minutes of your time. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have done for us tonight. Lord, as we go to bed tonight, we cover us with the blood of Jesus. Encounter us tonight. Visit us, Lord. Father, let your name alone be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. In Jesus' name. I see everyone next Tuesday. Have a wonderful night. Bye-bye. Thank you. God bless you. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.